it's Comic Spotlight! This time on Comic Spotlight, Jason James! And I'm your host, Video a lot of driving to get ready for the show. I mean, I had to go, you know, out in the middle of nowhere to meet with people. I've been working on the show for like four years, believe it or not, getting it ready. It takes a lot. And I noticed something when you drive out into the middle of nowhere. Why are there porno shops out in the middle of nowhere? I mean, have y'all noticed this? You'll be driving along and no gas stations. You won't even see tumbleweeds. And for 20 miles, you'll see this sign that says Triple X Shop, Triple X Shop. And you get there, and there's this porno shop in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, I'm wondering what, what's going on with the porno shop. Is Farmer Brown out there with a bunch of vibrators on the front of his tractor or something? Is this a new thing for plowing the field? I don't know. I think, it, I think it has to do with that old adage, if you build it, they will come. So, uh, I'm kind of worried about my hair. Does my hair look okay? My wife says I have wavy hair. I said, yeah, waving goodbye. I'm losing my hair. It's getting thin. I was thinking about taking that Propecia, you know, the, the, the pill. They say that women aren't supposed to touch it. I guess they spontaneously combust or something if they touch the pill. It's supposed to be dangerous, which, you know, it's good to have her in the house, I think. But uh, the problem with the pill, the Propecia pill that makes you grow hair, is one of the side effects is it has sexual side effects. It causes you to go impotent, I guess, you know. I mean, how ironic is that? You take the pill so that you can grow hair, so that you can get laid. <laughs> now all of a sudden your <laughs> doesn't work anymore because you took the pill to grow the hair. I'd rather be bald and horny, quite frankly. <laughs> I got to fly out to L.A. to meet with some executives about this show. And I'm still afraid to get on a plane, y'all. I mean, I know some weird stuff has happened, uh, you know, in the last couple of years. And... Uh, the whole Middle Eastern situation, you know, I feel, I actually feel bad for some of these Middle Eastern people who haven't, you know, they're getting the looks, you know, the, they get that look. I mean, can you imagine if there's any Middle Eastern pilots out there? Imagine you get on the plane and hear this come over the intercom. Hello, I am your captain speaking. <laughs> I went off. I, we'll be flying very fast, very high, and carrying lots of fuel. Thank you. Have a night trip. That's where I get off. They're hiring air marshals, though, to protect the planes. You've seen this in the paper, you know, these plain police, I guess. I thought, wouldn't it be great to call up and, and apply for one of these positions? You can call them up and you're like, yes, hello. <laughs> I am calling about the air marshal position. <laughs> so let me get this straight. I get to fly on the plane for free and I get to carry a gun. Where do I apply? <laughs> hello, hello. I think <laughs> Southwest Airlines, they got a thing now where they're charging double if you're too fat to fit in the seat. I agree with that. It should be like the mail. You just take your, you stand on a scale and they, they tell you how much it's going to cost to get on the plane. So they never really had a first, ca uh, first class on Southwest, but now they have a new class called a fat ass. <laughs> Coach and fat ass. But look at it, there's always a positive side, fat people. If you're going to pay for two seats, at least you get two meals. Yeah. Or at least one big bag of peanuts, I think. Hey, this is Carrot Top, you're watching Comic Spotlight. Look at that! <laughs> As you can tell, I like to eat. I love eating. Uh, my mom's idea of cooking, she thinks ketchup is a vegetable. You know what I'm saying? I always knew when the dinner was ready over at my mom's house because, you know, the smoke alarm would go off. That's pretty much it. She didn't know how to feed me. I had to learn how to cook myself, you know. So I spent a lot of time at the grocery store. And it's easy to shop for frozen hamburgers, you know, hot dogs. But the one thing that's hard to shop for is cereal. It used to be easy to pick out your cereal because all you had to do was find the one with the best prize in the box. You know? Get a free watch or something. Hey, it's there. That's why I like Captain Crunch. That's how I got hooked on it. 
got the best prizes in Captain Crunch. There's somebody had Captain Crunch this morning. I'm with you, baby. You know what I like about Captain Crunch? It, it's like impenetrable by milk. It's like balls of wax. Because you get that oil stain floating on top of the bowl when the milk is in. I don't know why I can't remember to take the spoon out of the bowl when I put it in the sink and turn the water on full blast because it hits the spoon. It makes this umbrella of water that hits... The... Does this happen to you? Because it happens to me every time. I, I can never forget to do that. I can never forget to... Don't cook naked. Don't, yeah, bacon. Exa- don't cook naked. Because, you know, it starts off you have a little rumble with your honey in the bed, you know. Don't worry, I'll get to you later. You have a little rumble with your honey. You say, honey, I'm going to go have some to drink. You know, I'm thirsty. Would you like some toast? Would you like some eggs? Would you like some bacon? Next thing you know, you're standing there, buck naked with a spatula. And I can tell you're picturing me this way now. And then, pop! You get popped by hot grease someplace you never want to get hit popped by hot grease. I have the scars to prove it. It's not nice. It's not a pretty thing. Don't. <laughs> this is all true. <laughs> I'll tell you a good place to eat, you know, when you got the holidays coming up, is the mall. I'm not talking about the food court, okay? That food sucks. I'm talking about food that comes on a toothpick. You know, the people handing out the free samples in the mall. If you plan your day right during a shift change, you can eat real good. You can hit that sucker twice. Lots of sausage, cheese, chicken nuggets. You know who I hate is the old people in the mall. Not the people shopping. I mean, it's not their fault they're old. I'm talking about the people who, instead of joining an exercise gym, have decided to exercise at the mall. They've got the jumpsuit on. Their ass is tight. They kind of look like they're trying to make it to the bathroom. You know, they're just... Join the gym. They're not half as bad as the survey people with the clipboards. Do you guys get this? Where they want to ask you stupid questions? How many movies have you seen this year, sir? What color are your panties? I usually get thrown out right about that. <sighs> this is a pretty good job, isn't it? Comedy show host? How many people would like to trade their job for this? This is the only job I could get because... You know, I was like a high school dropout, as if you couldn't tell, you know. But I get an email every day that says I can have a university diploma for only $25. <laughs> and you know what? I've been thinking about it. 25 bucks, man. I could, have, I could be a PhD. You'd be calling me Dr. Bob from now on, buddy. I'm just afraid of getting caught, you know. I'm afraid that I'm going to go in for a job interview. I'm going to hand them my degree of engineering from Kentucky. <laughs> So where did you, uh, what, what fraternity were you in when you stayed at the University of Kentucky? Uh, the dorm? Oh, yeah, which one? Uh, the one on the left? <laughs> I'd get busted, I know I would. That's why I'm not even going to try. I know I'm going to get busted. But, uh, how many of you here are married? I can feel the pain in your voice. Kill me. Kill me now. I got a ring on. I'm married. I got a wonderful wife. I got lucky. But I went through a few before I met her. Did you know that you can order a bride through the mail? Like from Russia? You can get a Russian bride? Yeah, it costs a couple thousand bucks. Which, when you add up a bunch of dates, it's a good deal. But if you don't have a lot of money, you can get like one of the amputated Russian brides. You know? They stepped on a landmine or something, lost their legs. Hey, legless chicks need loving too. Legs get in the way anyway, you know what I'm saying, brother? What the hell does she need legs for anyway? She's just going to walk around and find somebody better. And who cares if they can't speak English? I prefer them shut up. I'm only kidding. I love to hear what she's saying. I'm not paying attention. I'm done with the Russian chicks. You move up to the Ukrainians. They cost a little more, but they're worth it. You know what? Are there any lesbians here tonight? Any? I'm a lesbian. 
One time I asked my wife, this is a true story, this, she's going to kill me, she's going to kill me. I was like, have you ever had a lesbian fantasy? I'm like, if you ever were to go with another woman, who would it be? You know what she said? Katie Lang. Because I started looking at myself thinking, do I look like Katie Lang? She is kind of ugly and hairy. I guess, you know, Lyle love it, Katie Lang, same thing. <laughs> you know what I like about, <laughs> you know what I love about lesbians? I'm not talking about the, the, the lipstick lesbians like the ones on Howard Stern. I'm talking about the ones that drive the 4 by 4s The ones that look like Billy Ray Cyrus. They have the mullets where they shave the side of the head. You know? It's like business in the front, party in the back. I respect those chicks. Because they go all out with it, you know? They wear men's jeans, men's wallet, men's watch. Something about men's jeans on a, on a woman makes her ass look square. Especially with the chain wallet. Looks like the tailgate of a truck. <laughs> they try to grow facial hair. I like when they change the female name to seem more male. You know, like Karen becomes K-Ron. You know, stuff like that. Or what trips me out is when you meet somebody whose gender you cannot identify. You just you can't figure it out. So you figure, hey, you know, ask their name, and maybe that'll clue you in. And then it's like Ronnie, or Terry, or Sandy, Robbie. Could be either way, you know. There was this one girl, I swear to God, or man, I'm not sure. There was this person. It was either a man with very large breasts or an extremely ugly woman. Are you here tonight? Maybe we could all vote. No? <laughs> I'm Rodney Carrington, and you're watching Comic Spotlight. And uh, stay tuned. There's more. that we want to bring on stage right now. He's originally from Michigan, but we're not going to hold that against him, are we? Yeah. No, of course not. Please put your hands together for Jason James. Actually, it's Minnesota. That's okay. Thanks. Minnesota, Michigan, Manitoba. Nobody cares. I was looking forward to getting back to uh, Minnesota for my 10-year class reunion until I got a call from my class president. Oh, dude, I know you've made plans and we're looking forward to coming back and seeing everybody, but dude, I just haven't had time to get anything ready. You haven't had time? You've had 10 years, man. You've had a decade. Brent, we grew up in a town of 250 people. We had a graduating class of 32 kids. All you had to do was go out and get a 12-pack of beer, some lighter fluid, and a can of off, man. <laughs> Click. I am new to the Bible Belt. I've got one real quick observation. The Unicard system makes so much sense. <laughs> Who's keeping track of this? Uh, sir, you got a membership to the club? Uh, no, I don't. How much is it? Uh, it's free. <laughs> if it's free, it's not a membership. <laughs> this is basically an unnecessary speed bump on my way to cirrhosis of the liver. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> Who cares? The state of Texas, the federal government, I'm not getting any two-for-one offers in the mail from AA. Just part of it. Doesn't make sense. All the things that don't make sense are tickets that only affect me. That I'm not putting anybody else's life in jeopardy. Driving down the freeway, trooper quota parked up there on the shoulder with the lights still on from the last ticket they gave out, you know, end of the month. He's got to get them all in. I drive by, he pulls off, I'm thinking, huh. Forgot to flip the switch. No, nope. he's looking for me. License and registration, please. What was the offense? You were driving without a seatbelt. How much could that possibly be? It's a $200 fine. 
It's a $200 fine for basically being an idiot. I don't know when we started writing tickets for being an idiot, but I've got some tickets that I want to write. Anybody in the bank drive through balancing your checkbook, it's a $15 ticket, and I'm writing it. Some of us have to get in there and deposit money before our checks bounce. Take care of your personal finances on your own time. $30,000 millionaires wandering around, Kroger with their phone attached to their belt and their hands reset, talking about the big deal that they just loaded. I'm going to make it. Yeah, that's right, buddy. You're a millionaire. That's why you're buying the Kroger brand of pineapple and not the bull. Get out of here, Elevators. Anyone who stands directly in front of the door before they get open to get on, I've got to get off before you can get on. Get out of the way. One of these days, I'm going to stand there, I'm going to be like, come on, come on, come on. Back. It's a $50 ticket. Feel free to write it yourself if it happens to you. Airplane, I... I love people. But if we meet on a plane, don't talk to me. I don't care how many air miles you're racking up on Southwest. I don't care how your kids are doing in school or your lower intestinal tract infections. Just shut up. The number one way I found to keep people from bothering me on the airplane was clipping my fingernails. And the FAA has thwarted this because I might take over the plane and with the pilots a manicure. Really? He broke in and, and overtook the plane? Yes, have you ever seen cuticles so neatly trimmed? Look at this. I'm a threat to national security. <laughs> Typically, these are the same people that get in a hurry. They want to get off the plane in a hurry and get to the baggage claim because their bags are going to get there faster. They're not relaxed. When they do finally get to the baggage claim, they stand right at the bottom of the little ramp where it comes and hits the carousel and they have to touch every bag. Is that my bag? Is that my bag? Is that my bag? Is that my bag? First of all, it's a carousel. It's coming back. <laughs> then when they do find it, it's orange with some god-awful paisley print and a lime green disc about the size of a frisbee with their name on it. It's been an hour and a half, man. You can't remember what your bag looks like? From now on, you fly naked, and every time we get to the airport, we're going to help you find your bags. What do you do after a movie? Wander around the parking lot with your key, randomly checking automobiles. Is this my car? Is this my car? Is this my car? One more group that needs to get out of the gene pool before I leave you this evening. Any soccer mom who honestly believes everybody's a winner. Everybody's not a winner. There are winners and there are losers. We've got an entire generation of kids growing up wandering around soccer fields, picking flowers and chasing butterflies. Afterwards, they ascend into their SUV, holding onto a trophy, thinking they've accomplished something. They haven't. They lost. Give me the trophy back. <laughs> Oof, uh, it's time for my medication. Let's go ahead and bring video about back up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Spotlight in just a moment. Stay tuned. at the Lakewood Theater in Dallas, Texas. For more information on how you can get tickets or be a guest on Comic Spotlight, visit us online at www.comicspotlight.com. This is Video Bob, and I'll see you next time on Comic Spotlight, comedy for Generation X.